Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I'm bringing you guys a video on why I deleted my Intel i3-8100 CPU. As you guys probably know and should know, I hope, uh, this little CPU here cannot be overclocked. It, it is locked. It works just fine out of the box with the included TIM and the heatsink fan. But the case that this thing is going in does not have adequate ventilation. So I'm going to be deleting it, adding some uh, liquid metal thermal interface material uh, to make sure that it stays nice and cool but primarily quiet because the little fan included with the CPU can get pretty loud. So without wasting any time let's go ahead and get right to it. Uh, the blade that we're going to be using here we have to make sure that it is really sharp. It does not have any rough edges or anything like that so you know that by sliding your fingers along the sharp edge there. And uh, what we do here is Make sure that if you're if you're gonna take the this voyage, make sure that you do this correctly by lining up the blade. See how the I'm lining it up there uh, with the silicone. You know, and give it a slightly an angle, not too much. Um, if you do this like this, if you do it right, like how I am doing it, um, you shouldn't have any problems. You know, you should not uh, damage your CPU. Um, just make sure you 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 start at the corners here, go you know back and forth, side to side there, as as you see. Um, going just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch, if possible, if possible, less than that. You will know that you've, you know, you you cut through the through the glue uh, because you feel the blade sliding in uh, further. At that point, you need to stop, back out, move on to the next corner, and just keep going around the CPU as you see here in the video. And don't worry about touching the bottom of the CPU, guys. You're not going to damage it as long as you wash your hands, you know, to make sure you don't contaminate anything down there. And again, I want to remind you guys, don't go too deep here. Once you're already cut around the CPU and you, you know you cut around all the glue, uh, you don't need to, uh, you know, get the blade in there too far. Uh, try to stay, try to stay um, at least a quarter of an inch out uh, from so that you do not damage the CPU core. You don't have any capacitors or anything like that around the core here on this side of the CPU but uh, you may still damage uh, the, 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 the dye itself, the silicone itself, uh, if you go too deep. So again, try to stay uh, at least a quarter of an inch or, or, or less than that uh, from the, uh, the center of the CPU. All right, so now we got it open. The next thing that we need to do is remove that glue. Uh, we do that by either using your fingernail or preferably using an old ID that you no longer need. Um, just make sure that if whatever you use, it's not going to be harder than the, than the uh, metal or the silicone uh, uh, around the die of the CPU. Um, as you see there, an ID card works just fine. Just make sure you get as much as you can. You, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you get as much of that glue, that nasty stuff out, off. Um, because we are going to be resealing the CPU. And even if you don't, even if you just want to leave it uh, without any glue, you know, you still want to remove that glue because you want to maximize the contact between the uh, internal heat sink and the die itself so that um, the, uh, the thermal... Um, interference material has good contact between the two areas there so um, yeah get rid of the glue 
use a little uh, brush like you see here or you can use even a toothbrush that'll work just fine just to get rid of the little particles and have something underneath to catch all that nasty stuff how i usually do this is i like to leave the old thermal paste i don't remove it until um, everything has been cleaned up around it so that way i'm not going back you know uh, contaminating one area you know after cleaning the other so just um you can do your way you know i guess whichever way is fine but this is the way i do it um, so yeah once i clean up the surrounding area then i go uh, and remove the thermal paste and uh, here you want to be as, as thorough as you can and make sure you remove every bit of the nasty stuff uh, don't leave anything behind especially on the dye itself um, on the internal heat sink uh, there is a little pad that i use uh, for removing um, all the microscopic particles uh, off the internal heat sink. This pad here that I got with Liquid Ultra a while back, I use it for uh, polishing the, the those type of surface areas. And what you want to do is, at the same time you're polishing it, uh, microscopically you are creating more surface area. You 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 are, as you see there, the little tiny microscopic uh, microscopic scratches. That's what you want. You want that on the um, on the nickel plated copper there, so that the 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 gallium particles, the gallium atoms, can bond with the uh, with the with the metal uh, better. Uh, now, the the CPU core itself has a diffusion uh, barrier there that protects the 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 gallium atoms from from entering the the core itself and you know causing mayhem in there. So there's no need to uh, remove or, or you know go crazy doing something like like what I would like what we're doing here on the uh, internal heat sink. You don't need to do you don't need to use that pad on that on that uh, CPU dial or you most likely will destroy your CPU. So uh, just wanted to make sure you guys understand that very clearly that you don't don't use anything rough on that die. If you want to uh, um, polish anything, you can do that on the um, on the internal heat sink. Uh, as you see there, don't don't go too crazy about it uh, with it either because you don't want to reduce the uh, uh, the surface area between the, the 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 core and the internal heat sink. You want to make sure that things stay pretty tight there. Uh, even though you're still going to add uh, liquid metal, you know, um, thermal e interface material, you still want to make sure that uh, the, again that the uh, the contact area between the die and the uh, internal heat sink. Uh, it's pretty tight there so yeah now depending which uh, liquid metal you're going to be using guys uh, if you're going to be going with uh, thermal grizzly uh, there's a common problem that i've seen <laughs> around the web with this particular little tubes here where guys uh, try to push push the uh, liquid metal out of the syringe here and it goes out squirting everywhere all over your components so my advice is if you're doing this for the first time aim the the nozzle where the liquid metal is going to come out aim that down towards a piece of paper or somewhere safe away from yourself your eyes or and or the equipment that you're going to be working with so preferably on a t piece of you know piece of tissue and when you start seeing a little bit you know when you start seeing a little bit coming out then stop you know go over the uh go over on w the area where you're trying to apply the uh, liquid metal and you know just kind of dab it on there but uh, yeah, don't don't try to squeeze it as you're, you know, on top of the uh, of your CPU or GPU or whatever it is that you want to use this stuff with. Uh, don't do that because they may just squirt everywhere, and yeah, it'll be a pain in the butt to remove this stuff. So uh, yeah, I've seen that a lot. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up. And also, uh, it may seem like a you know, for those of you that are maybe watching this video and done this before, you know, you consider yourselves pros or whatever. Um, uh, you may think that I've used too much liquid metal here. Now, the way, the reason why I use just a tiny bit extra, uh, you don't have, you don't have to use this much. It'll work just fine with a little less than this. Um, but the reason why I use this much here uh, is because I know that um, the there's going to be fusion between the the liquid metal and the internal heat sink, uh, and some of this, uh, you, you know, evaporation, quote unquote evaporation. Um, occurs after you know maybe a month or two or depending um, what the working conditions are going to be um, where the 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 some of the liquid metal is going to be absorbed by the by the the nickel or copper whichever whichever material uh, whichever surface area it was where you that you applied this on um, so you lose a little bit maybe an eighth 
of the the quantity that you apply here to just uh, that what I call evaporation um, so yeah I use a little bit extra here I never had any problems the cooling performance is is, is the same as it would with uh, any less or any any more you don't want to apply too much of this stuff of course because it is going to potentially uh, leak out and cause damage around other components uh, surrounded the CPU the, the the core area so you want to be conservative as to with what uh, will with how much of this stuff you use and now this uh, black stuff here that I'm using this is just a regular silicone uh, sanitary silicone that you would use on counters or you know your bathroom or you know whatever um, read through the uh, if you if, if you're gonna get something similar to this you may want to read through the uh, instructions there um, on the back of the tube because it, it does tell you what the uh, tolerance the temperature tolerance of the the substance is uh, this one here I believe it is uh, 90 Celsius which is uh, pretty good uh, after that you know uh, it may deteriorate it may lose this uh, is bond to the to the between the two materials so uh, yeah pay attention to those to to that detail there um, and again it's nasty stuff you make a mess I you know I do this with my fingers I'm sure someone out there maybe in the comment section can uh, give me some tips as to how to do this a little cleaner so it doesn't get all messy like that but um, uh, yeah that's what I use it works perfectly it stays uh, pretty solid pretty pretty um, uh, pretty good for for, for long periods of time, for years that I've done this, I've used the same stuff, so it works pretty well. Now that the glue is applied, I like to uh, put the CPU back in the little plastic case that it came in, and then I have a little clamp that I use to apply pressure um, on the outside um, so that uh, you maximize the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the bond between the heat sink in the internal heat sink and the silicone itself um, yeah because you don't want this stuff falling off especially when you throw it back when you throw it in, in, into the CPU socket um, it tends to slide off or the the, the internal heat sink tends to slide a little bit if, if you don't glue this stuff back on so you don't want that and here is the end result this is what the CPU looks like after the uh, glue has dried it usually takes a couple of hours um, for it to dry and so yeah is uh, not too not too bad not too dirty of a job here um, yeah, I've actually done better than this but uh, this looks okay um, so yeah now it's time to throw this um, into the little motherboard that we're gonna be uh, using here and um, see what type of temperatures we have and most importantly again the uh, noise uh, levels uh, we want to make sure that that fan is not um, you know spinning up too too fast and causing too much distraction there so all right uh, let's go ahead and slap this puppy back in and uh, uh, see what kind of temperatures we have And for this here, the thermal paste that we're going to be using, it's just some generic thermal paste that I have later around. Uh, and we're going to be sticking with the P method. This seems to work pretty well. And of course, we're going to stick with the included Intel heatsink fan. As cheap as they are, you know, they get the job done, especially for, you know, when used with the little CPU like this one here. Can't really complain. So let's go ahead and get that uh, 
put on then we'll go into the bios and check some settings change some settings for the memory to make sure that we get the best performance out of it by changing the uh, lowering the clock speeds on the memory actually so um, yeah we'll do that here in a bit but this is the little case as you notice back there there's no exhaust fan so yeah temperatures you know ventilation is not the best so here we are in the BIOS, we're going to lower the timings and change the uh, the old settings that I have with the previous CPU to the correct uh, speed here for the RAM. And we're going to change the uh, timings to 13 instead of uh, 16, which are the stock settings for this memory here. Alright, so now it's time to boot into Windows and see what type of uh, temperatures we're looking at here. First, um, I want to take a look and see if the uh, timings, uh, the new timings for the memory is stuck. Um, we're going to do that by opening up CPU ID. And then we're going to go to the memory tab. Make sure that uh, we're looking at 13, 14, and 14. And I forget what the last, uh, what the last number is. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and look at some temperatures. Let's run some, uh, a, a quick V-Ray benchmark to maximize um, load here push the, temp the CPU to its limit um, let's go ahead and get that done and uh, pay attention to the right here on the CPU uh, ID hardware monitor and look at the uh, temperature there as you can see it doesn't even reach 60 so I am pretty happy overall with the uh, per with, with the job here and how everything um, is looking so far as far as temperatures and noise uh, very quiet well, this is all I have for now, guys. I uh, hope this was uh, helpful to anyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, as, you know, even if it was just entertaining. Subscribe, hit like if you did like the video. If you didn't, you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.